Hi everybody, Dr. Alan Arnett here. Well, during these challenging and difficult times, I'd like to get my voice out to the people who enjoy listening to what I have to say regarding health. I have been listening intensely over the last several months and certainly the last several weeks to a variety of different uh, information sources, some straight out of China as I have connections in China from my years of studying in the hospital, from what I can see from the German physicians, as well as what's being uh, told here in America. There are a lot of things that are being said and I don't need to review all the things that are being said the most, which is mostly about how to keep your hands clean, your face clean, your house clean, and how to keep uh, your, your family safe. What I would like to do is to go a little bit deeper inside your own individual body as that's really where my expertise lies. So from what we can tell about viruses in general, and this coronavirus seems to be exactly the same, is they have a route of entry through the mucous membranes, either through the eye, the nose, or the mouth. They're not going through the skin as far as we can tell. Mucous membranes were designed by nature to constantly push things back out. So if we got sand in our eye, the mucous membrane would flood it and push it out. If we got some dust in our nose, the mucous membrane would push it out and the same thing for our mouth. So we can follow that same procedure for any type of virus, but it would include the coronavirus as we know it lands on the mucous membranes first. So the first thing I would like to emphasize is what things are done to decrease mucus. Well, to decrease mucus is actually very simple. All you have to do is stay nervous, drink lots of coffee, don't drink any water, and that will dehydrate you and put you into sympathetic mode, which will keep you stressed out. So yes, high stress will make your mucus thin. Staying stressed will make your mucus thin. Not drinking enough water will make your mucus thin. There are certain medications that can make your mucus thin. And while cannabis is considered an essential business still this time of year, I will remind you that if you smoke an old fashioned joint or bong hit, that's gonna make your mucous membranes very dry. It's gonna make your mucous membranes not very strong. So I would uh, consider using the cannabis possibly in other uh, routes of, of entry such as edibles or something else. At any rate, to keep your mucous membranes high, it's water, it's minerals, and it's making sure that you stay on top of it. So one of the recommendations I've heard, which I think is really quite good, is to sip on water about every 20 minutes. If you drink a whole ton of water at one time, you're likely to just pee that right out within the half hour. That doesn't necessarily hydrate the body. But if you s take smaller amounts, let's say quarter to a half a cup, about every 20 or 30 minutes throughout the entire day, more of that water is likely to stick inside of your body and help to make mucus. You can tell if your mouth feels moist. You can tell if your mouth feels dry. If your lips are dry, it's not just a matter of putting uh, lipstick on them or some type of, of lip balm. It's really saying that your stomach and your intestines are not, do not have the right moisture balance. When we look at the preventative formulas from China that I have access to, that I have many of my patients on, and if you are a patient of mine, I'd love to help get you on some preventative Chinese herbs. They're mostly focused on making the virus not stick, helping to coat the nose, the throat, and the upper respiratory uh, with herbs that known to help with sputum, to help get rid of uh, the virus. So there are some preventative formulas that can be useful, and if you're interested in that and you're already a patient of mine, please give us a call. We are still operating through telemedicine uh, and we'd love to hear from you regarding that. Now I'd like to dive in however to things that you can do from home. That's the point of today's uh, talk. So uh, minerals, minerals, the macro minerals that we think of like calcium, magnesium, potassium, those are very important but there's also tens of other vitamins, I'm sorry, minerals that are very important for the body. One of my favorite things to do is to take Soleil water. Soleil water is nothing but a mixture of Himalayan salt and water. If you put either a pinch of Himalayan salt in the water and let it diffuse and drink that throughout the day, that can add more minerals to your uh, diet. As a quick side note, uh, many people were scared away from consuming salt. That was mostly industrial salt, sodium chloride with iodine, anti-caking, bleaching, and flowing agents. Those are not healthful. Those make people sick. So we are encouraging, if you increase your salt, to make it a whole salt, such as Himalayan or Celtic salt or the stuff called real salt, uh, sea salt. Those types of things are, are, are going to be more opportunity to make your body hold the water and not throw you into a mineral imbalance. All right. So now on to it. So the home remedy that can be done uh, quite a bit is to make sure that you rinse the surfaces of your body. This would include your hair and your skin. These are easy, just taking a shower with basic soap and shampoo. You don't need anything special. You definitely don't need to put insecticides on your body. You just need soap and water to rinse it off. 
So your skin, however, and particularly your hands, if you wash your hands a lot, as I am as a healthcare provider, then you're going to get little cracks in the skin and that becomes route of infection. So every night, you want to make sure that you give yourself a deep soak in some creams. I'm using emu. I'm using CBD oil. I think shea butter is good. Aloe vera can be good for the skin of anything that you wash a great deal to make sure that it doesn't become chapped. Remember, cracks in the field are what can allow things in. So at the very least, you could even use some Vaseline thin layers if you have really, really cracked dry skins, uh, skin from washing so much. All right, to begin with the rinse inside, we begin with the nose. The ancient Indians called it neti. Neti means to rinse the nose with a saline solution. In the modern world today, we have two basic types. There's the original neti pot where you use a gravity feed method. This is one of my favorite methods, but for many people, they're scared of it or they have issues and traumas come up. So they have the kind that you can keep your head upright and just squirt and it mists a little bit of your sinuses. It also can clear. Either one of those today would be good. We just need basic saline rinse to keep the nose rinsed out. You don't need to do it more than once a day, maybe twice a day if you've been out a lot. And the recommendation is, is to rinse after you've been out. So if you go to the grocery store, if it's your day, or you take a walk outside to come home and rinse your nose is, is, is very good. Yes, there are things you can put in your neti if you get sick, but that's a different topic and a different story. So on with the mouth. The mouth can be rinsed with just simple saline, which means salt and water. It can be rinsed with a coconut oil, as we can do um, oil pulling, which can be very helpful for removing uh, viruses from the mucous membranes. And that is something that can be done quite frequently. Now, when we rinse the mouth, we then spit it back out into either the sink or the toilet. If you are using coconut oil, it congeals with cool, so don't spit it in your sink, spit it in the toilet or the trash. Um, viruses, as we know about this uh, coronavirus particularly, can last on surfaces for quite some time. That's where we want to make sure that we're using the soap and water or the isopropyl uh, alcohol solutions to clean our surfaces, particularly after we've gone to the bathroom. So rinsing the mouth, rinsing the nose. Now the throat, the throat needs to be gargled with. It could be your typical hot water with salt, as we're familiar with here. But also something kind of new to some people, not everyone, is to use apple cider vinegar water rinse. That would be about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar with equal parts water, two tablespoons, and then pour that in the mouth and gargle with that. And that actually helps to create a, a, an acidic pH. Uh, that will help both create more mucus and to help uh, make the environment uh, less hospitable for the viral uh, replication. Now, the last one are your lungs. To prevent lungs is to do breath exercises. I have other videos on that, so please check out my YouTube channel, parkviewwellness.com, or my website, parkviewwellness.com, uh, and there are videos there particularly about breathing and breath exercises. What I believe is helpful and what, has research, what research has shown uh, in past situations is that by doing inhalants regularly of not just disinfectants but of certain essential oils, I know I sound like a hippie when I say that, but I'm going to put my foot in the door on that one, I think it can actually keep our lungs healthy and safe, particularly since the primary objective is to keep the virus from progressing down into the lower respiratory. We have weeks once it lands to keep pushing it out and to fend ourselves off from this. So we need not be so scared. We just need to take decisive action. So rinsing the nose, rinsing the mouth, gargling with salt water or apple cider vinegar, rinsing when you've gone outside, making sure you don't get too dry a skin so that we don't have routes of infection and then doing the breath exercises for the lung. First of all, to increase capacity, to mucus coat the lungs and the trachea, and to also make sure that you're using like a, a, a eucalyptus I happen to like. I think thieves oil, if you're familiar with that, is good. I think tea tree oil is also very good to aromatize. You can either hold the bottle up to your nose and inhale. You could put a few drops into a wine glass and inhale. Or you could put it into a steam uh, carrier. Uh, those of you that even have some type of um, uh, machine that like a like a um, that you put albuterol in, the name is escaping me now for asthma. Those you can put water in and some essential oils in and, and diffuse it into your lungs. This is different than just diffusing in the air. That may be too. Uh, that may be pleasant, but not concentrated enough. You would need something more concentrated for you. All of this is a preventative act. None of this is how to treat it once it has happened. If you do have questions, I am offering telemedicine. Chinese medicine has been dealing with these types of things. This is their 36th 
epidemic pestilence. So they're on top of it. I'm connected to Chinese medicine both by philosophy, both by 25 years of clinical experience, and by my years of studying in the hospital with China. So please, if you have any questions once you start to get sick, please contact me. We are offering telemedicine conferences. Regarding your home, you want to keep the air in your home fresh. Whether it rains or not, open the door and windows at some point and let fresh air come in. Stale air, like stagnant surfaces, can also grow pestilence in general and may encourage people to have lowered immunity. So for now, I just wanted to get what you can do at home. The last thing I will say is what I would recommend highly that you not do. I recommend highly that you don't, do not eat cakes, cookies, muffins, breadings, pancakes, waffles, candies, and all of those types of hyper sugar, hyper stimulating, hyper inducing things. Not only are they bad for the immune system, and there's 50 years of evidence that sugar damages immunity. You may recall that after we uh, eat candy, we're supposed to brush our teeth because it could rot our teeth. What do you think it's doing to the inside of your body? So this is not the time for sugar in the form of sweets, and if it is, please eat it the smallest amount possible. Make it very judicious. This is not to take away fun from people. It's to really remind what is the safest things to do. There will be more videos coming from me, so please check our YouTube channel and go ahead and subscribe and like us, please. That helps us out so we can make more of these videos. From my heart to yours, happy healing.